Welcome to Poetry with Shing, where we uncover the beauty behind poetry. In today's episode, we'll be looking at Doke at the Quorum S by Wilfred Owen and The Soldier by Rupert Brooke. And the question that we'll be answering today is to write a critical comparison of the following poems, paying close attention to ways in which language, style and form contribute to each poet's portrayal of war. Without further ado, let's begin. Doke at Decorum Est by Wilfred Owen is a poem about the atrocities of war. The speaker adopts a bitter tone in criticizing the atrocities of war and the patriotism that is encouraged of young men to join the war. So there's an idea of uh, atrocities of war, as well as a bitter tone. On the other hand, Soldier by Rupert Brooke is a poem about the glory that war brings a soldier and glorifies the sacrifices made by soldiers in dying during combat. Thus, both poets have differing attitudes towards war, with poet A being scornful and cynical towards war, while poem B glorifies war and views that there is pride in sacrifice. And poems A and B have been labelled for you on the screen. Both poems adopt rhyme in their poems to bring out their message about war. In poem A, there is an ABAB rhyme scheme structure in the poem, as it emphasizes the repetitive nature of casualties in war and how death in war is inevitable and hence worthless. On the other hand, poem B takes the form of a sonnet with a rhyme scheme of ABAB structure similar to A, similar to poem A. However, the purposeful use of a sonnet is to convey the poet's romanticisms of war, as sonnets are often used as declarations of love. So sonnet is a romanticism of war. Thus, the poet glorifies sacrifice in war through conveying that sacrifice is all for the good and betterment of the country. Besides that, the use of punctuation in poems A and B, although similar in number but different in nature, further contribute to the poet's stand on war. In poem A, exclamation marks and long dashes are used, especially in the second stanza, here, as circled here, as the poet seeks to create suspense and intensify the somber and tense mood. Created with the image of a gas attack. The punctuation reveal the harsh realities The harsh realities of war is brutal and unexpected, as the gas attack was launched without any warning. The image of participating in war as an act of heroism and glory. Uh, through portraying the harshness of war, the poet thus destroys the image of participating in war as an act of heroism and glory, but one of terror and gore. On the other hand, poem B uses many commas throughout the stanzas. I have circled a few here. The commas create a flow in the poem, so there's an idea of flow, and adds a song-like quality to it. Hence, on top of the poem being a sonnet, the song-like quality created by the commas further emphasise the romanticism of war the poet is conveying to readers. The song thus seeks to glorify and spread the value of honour and glory in participating in war. Furthermore, the careful word choice in each poem create differing moods that contribute to the poet's attitude towards war. In poem A, the continuous form of words in describing the gas attack are used as the poet uses guttering, choking, drowning. So you can see the guttering, choking and drowning here. The poet creates a gory and specific image in readers' minds of a soldier dying a humiliating and unhonourable death. So it's humiliating and not honourable. through inhaling gas by the choice of such words that paint a vivid image in readers' minds. The use of the continuous form also connotes that the death has repeatedly replayed in the speaker's mind even after it has happened, highlighting the trauma witnessing death in war brings. As such, the poet is saying that death in war is painful and is not something that brings glory to one. In addition, the poet is also saying that participating in war can also cause scarring mental side effects. Hence, the poet is critical and bitter towards the idea of war and dying in war. In contrast, poem B uses gentle and calming words with positive denotations to paint an image of peace, fulfillment, and happiness. 
The poet describes nature vividly through words such as rivers and suns to paint a soothing image of eternal happiness and fulfillment for the soldiers who have selflessly sacrificed themselves in war. So there's an idea of gentleness, there's an idea of uh, this England, rivers, and blessed by sons of home. So there's this idea about how there's eternal happiness because of sacrifice during war. This shows that the poet is glorifying participation in war and how dying in war is very much for the country's benefit. Furthermore, poem B paints the soldiers being part of the war as willing sacrifices, as seen from the word choices of dust and corner. So dust is here, and the corner is um over here, corner of a foreign land. The speaker describes the soldier as a small speck of dust, showing that the soldier is merely a small part in the grand scheme of winning glory and honour for the country. The use of corner also supports the idea that the soldier is only a small part of a larger picture. Through using such words to suggest soldiers' participation in contributing to the country's benefit, the poet glorifies war as it suggests the sense of belonging for the soldiers that they are important in contributing to the betterment of the country and that their death was meaningful and worth it. So there's this corner. So they actually did some sort of uh, substantial contribution. And this idea of dust being very small and insignificant. Both poems also use vivid imagery to convey their poet's attitudes towards war. In poem A, the image of destruction, gore, and hell is conjured in the reader's mind through the vivid descriptions of the soldier dying from a gas attack. The poet uses detailed descriptions, such as white eyes writhing in his face, over here. And devil sick of sin, as found below, to highlight the extent of destruction war brings. The white eyes writhing connotes the uncontrollable nature of death in war, as it is ines inescapable and inevitable and also hints at the exploitation of soldiers in war, as everything suggests possession. So there might be exploitation. As such, the poet is saying that soldiers are coerced into joining the war with promise of glory and honour, but are forced into inhumane situations like gas attacks, and are thus lied to and exploited by their homeland to fight for a meaningless and meaningless endeavour. Furthermore, the devil's sick of sin connotes a criticism towards the perpetration of war as they are likened to devils, creatures from hell. The poet thus believes that war is a crime committed by those of the higher ranks and should not continue to be perpetrated. In contrast, poem B creates images of heaven as the poet describes afterlife, after death, in war as a pulse in the eternal mind. So that's over here. And in hearts at peace under an English heaven. So that will be here, the last line. The connotation of a pulse in the eternal mind is such that despite the soldier's death, he will continue to live on forever as a reminder of his faithful and patriotic contributions towards the country's war efforts. So it's a kind of um, eternal reminder of his, of his contributions. The idea of living for eternity is also shown in how the soldier thinks himself to be at peace under an English heaven, which implies that peace comes to the soldier after fighting war, and the soldier is now enjoying afterlife in heaven. With this description, the, so, uh, with this description the poet is thus trying to say that despite the possible hardships in war, one will ascend to heaven as reward for their selfless contribution once again glorifying war and, then, and the act of participating in war. Furthermore, both poets' use of the title reveal their attitude towards war. In poem A, inversion is used as Owen inverts the traditional Latin phrase it is, sweeting, it, is, it is sweet and fitting to die for one's country into an ironic phrase as he criticizes the romanticism of war in the poem. So, this is actually a traditional Latin phrase to say it is sweet and fitting to die for one's country. 
But in reality, Owen is doing an inversion technique. Thus, through the title, Owen is conveying how misled people are in thinking that sacrificing in an act of patriotism is. On the other hand, Poem B's title, The Soldier, reveals how the experience of a soldier after war during afterlife is universal. As the poem describes the experience as being one of pleasure and enjoyment, Poet B thus seeks to convey that despite all soldiers suffering in the war, they will all be rewarding, they will all be rewarded by divinity after death, hence glorifying war. In conclusion, poem A is critical towards war and adopts a bitter tone in treating war and participation in war, thereby disagreeing that war is a noble act of patriotism. On the other hand, poem B adopts a blissful, proud tone of the speaker having been honoured to participate in war, thereby glorifying the endeavour and its underlying patriotism. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye.